So what's up guys, it's Ash here and welcome back to a brand new video. Just to start off the video, I'd like to apologize for not posting yesterday. I've been suffering with one of the worst stomach bugs I've had in my entire life. Really wasn't very pleasant. I'm not going to go into the details, but yeah, couldn't record a video yesterday. But uh, anyway, today we're back with some 442 custom tactics. Now, I've posted a 442 last week, which I've, you know, really said is amazing. And it is, but I'd probably say it's not the most meta of 442s. It's a very fun tactic to use but it's not the most meta in the top end divisions of the game so like even though i can get some results with it you know to consistently beat people in the top divisions of the game you probably need something a bit more meta which is what i'm going to show you guys today uh so yeah i hope you guys enjoy let's get right into the video if you guys want coins for fc24 make sure you check out mmoexp.com their link is down in the description they're very fast they're very cheap they're very reliable and if you use my code rima you can get yourself a lovely five percent discount all right then guys so starting off with the custom tactics for the 442 for the defensive style as always we have this on balance now the reason we have it on balance is because it gives you the best control over your defense so you know when you want to be aggressive and press your opponent you can do that and then when you want to be a little bit more passive and drop off you can also do that so balance does give you the most control which is very very important and when it comes to applying pressure in this game there is something else that we can do which does not require using a pressure tactic so balanced is the way to go here now moving on to the defensive width guys i've been saying this a lot to people recently but i think it's best to use a lower width on this game uh, and keep your defense nice narrow and compact even though people like to go for these cutbacks all the time down the wing it doesn't matter what your defensive width is they're always going to go for that so i think you're at least better off being nice and defensively sound and compact in the middle and then when somebody wants to go for a cutback just manually pulling a player out to the wing so I think a lower width is better, but that's just me. You can change this if you like. Now moving on to the depth guys, this is what I was on about when it came to pressure in this game. If you're on the new gen versions of EAFC 24 uh, and you have your depth on 71 or above, you'll get this automatic press from the AI. It's a very strong press, a very overpowered press and doesn't really require you to do anything. Basically the AI will pretty much defend for you and make it very difficult for your opponent to attack. Completely breaks their attacking AI and the thing about 71 depth is it has like a glitch with the stamina where it doesn't affect it or drain it as much as it should compared to like these pressure tactics so whereas like on these pressure tactics you'd lose a lot of your players stamina uh just by having your depth on 71 it doesn't really seem to affect it so this is very overpowered if you're on the old gen version of the game though i would suggest having your depth on like 55 to 60 because this 71 depth thing is new gen exclusive now moving on to the build up play guys I have this on balance this is because I find it to be the most consistent and varied form of build up when you have this on balance you can pick and choose when and where you use each style of build up so if you want to play slowly you can and then if you decide you want to speed it up and play a bit faster you can also do that so balance allows you to pick and choose when and where you use each form of build up which is very very useful guys now moving on to chance creation guys we have this on direct passing this tactic is very important in my opinion because it's the only one which will actually allow you to break through a park the bus defense so when your opponent is parking the bus when you use direct passing what your attackers will do or they'll push very far into your opponent's box uh, and your opponent's defenders should automatically follow them and track their run and then when the defender has followed the attacker who's making the run the attacker will then track back so you can cut back to him it's a very boring matter but it's very important at the moment because it's the only way to beat those uh, drop back players now moving on to the attacking width guys because the 442 i find it to be like a nice balance formation i don't like going for a crazy high width and i don't like a crazy low width either i like to go for a nice balance width uh, i just went with one below 50 so it seems a little bit more narrow than wide just a psychological thing but 49 width has been really good for me with this formation uh, for players in box guys i have this on six this is so i can get a few players into the box to help me finish off those chances but we don't overcommit everybody on the team to the point where we're always going to get counter-attacked if we lose out on possession that being said you can choose whatever you want for this for the corners and free kicks this is a preference thing but i just have them on one at the moment uh, you can pretty much choose whatever you want for this sorry to interrupt the video guys but i have noticed around 90 percent of you that watch the content are not subscribed so if you are finding any of these videos helpful please be sure to hit that subscribe button as it does help me out massively also don't forget to drop the video a like as well and with all that aside guys let's get back to the video now moving on to the player instructions guys on both the strikers we have them on stay central 
and get in behind. Now, the reason we have them on stay central is because we primarily want them to stay in those central positions so they're where the strikers should be. They're always there to finish off your chances uh, and they can always be relied upon in those central positions. The other 4-4-2 I showed you, I did have one striker on like drift wide in that. But like I said, if you want the most meta instructions, stay central is the way to go. We also have them on getting behind because obviously a lot of people are using 71 depth and are using really high defensive lines as a result. So by having these players on getting behind, they're always going to look to get in behind those high defensive lines and give you the best chances of scoring goals. So stay central getting behind on both of these strikers. Now for the right mid and the left mid guys, we have them on comeback on defense, cut inside, get in behind and get into the box for cross. We have them on comeback on defense. So we always ensure that they're in the correct positions when we don't have the ball. If you have these players on basic defensive support, they can get a little bit lazy and they won't always fill in the correct positions. But by putting them on comeback on defense, it ensures that they will always fill in the correct position and do their defensive jobs. Uh, cut inside is pretty useful because it allows these wingers to get uh, closer to the strikers that are in the more narrow positions. What will usually happen with this instruction is your left mid and right mid will start quite wide in the attack and then they'll gradually make those cut inside runs to throw off your opponent. It's very useful uh, and very difficult to stop in my opinion. We also have these players on getting behind. So like the strikers, they utilize their pace to get in behind the defensive line and get us as many chances as possible. This will also push your wide attackers quite close to the strikers as well, which is very useful. And we also have these players on get into the box for cross. So they're not hesitant to get into the penalty area and help us out. Sometimes if you have them on balance crossing runs, they can be a little bit hesitant and not really do much. So get into the box for cross, very important in my opinion. Now, moving on to the left center mid guys, I do use a more defensive minded midfielder. So on this player, my more defensive one, I have him on stay back and cover center. Pretty self-explanatory instructions, but stay back is obviously important because we don't want this player flying forward. He is a defensive player, so we just want him to stay back and be nice and defensive. And then cover center means he'll primarily defend those central areas because we don't need him to cover the wing as we've got the left mid to do that for us. Moving on to the right center mid, guys, I do use a more box-to-box -box style player in this position. So on this player, we have him on balanced attack and cover center. We have him on balanced attack because, like I said, he's a more box-to-box -box style player, so we don't just want to restrict him to defending all the time. We want him to do a bit of both, so we kind of just let him do that. And then we also have him on cover center for the same reason as the left center mid, where he will primarily defend those central areas as we don't need him to cover the wings. Uh, moving on to the fullbacks, guys. On your more attacking fullback, I suggest balanced attack and overlap. Now, the reason I suggest this is because the 4-4-2 can be quite narrow at times, and we do have our left mid and right mid on the cut inside instructions. So a lot of the time, these uh, two midfielders, the left mid and the right mid, will be in more narrow areas, meaning we need these fullbacks to overlap to give us that extra width and help us out. So on your more attacking fullback, balanced attack and overlap, really, really useful, guys. For your other fullback, the more defensive-minded one, I suggest stay back and overlap. This is so you always have at least three defenders back at a time, so you're nice and defensively sound. But when you send him on a run forward, for the same reasons as the left back, we'll have him on the overlap instruction so he can add extra width to the attack. So one fullback on balanced overlap, the other on stay back overlap. As for the two center backs, guys, we leave them alone. And the keeper, I also leave them alone. I don't touch them. But yeah, that is everything for the video, guys. If you have enjoyed or found it useful, please be sure to drop it a like. Sub to the channel if you are new so you never miss out on any videos like this. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you are notified when a video is posted. And with all that aside, guys, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.